Okay, this sermon's entitled, Faith Does Not Include Obedience to Any Law Whatsoever. And let me, let me explain that. Let me, let me open up with prayer, and then with a few verses. All right, dear God, thank you for allowing me to um, get into your word and to explain what, what it says. It's very clear in what it says. And there are false teachers everywhere trying to attack the simple, the simple doctrine of faith, trying to make it something it's not. Keep us safe. Bless us abundantly. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Now, first thing we need to do is we need to, we need to, we need to go to what the Bible says faith is. Now, I've heard people say, well, faith is commitment. Faith is obedience. <clears throat> okay, does the Bible say faith is obedience and commitment? No, let's just turn to Hebrews chapter 11. Let's just see what the Bible says faith is. It doesn't matter what people say. It matters what the Bible says. And faith is not obedience. Faith is not being willing to turn from sin and live right. That's not what faith is. Faith is accepting a proposition, agreeing with it, saying, I, I agree with that. I believe that. It's trusting. So the Bible talks about faith. It says faith is in chapter uh, Hebrews, excuse me, Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. So faith is, a, is the substance okay, of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. So when, when Jesus Christ says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, <clears throat> He that believeth on me hath everlasting life. If you believe on him, you have everlasting life. You put your faith in him. You know you, you're going to heaven because of what, of what he did for you. That's faith. That's biblical faith. It's, it's taking God at his word saying, I believe that. Okay? <clears throat> now, it's not obedience. It's not works. Faith does not have any works mixed in with it. Now, let me prove that. Okay? Turn to Galatians chapter 3. <clears throat> We're going to look at a few verses that talk about faith, believing, being saved. Start with verse 20. Okay? There's a ton of verses on this that prove that the faith, faith is not, has nothing to do with law or obedience. Okay? Obedience and law are the same thing, by the way. Think about it. When a person says you've got to be obedient, obedient to what? Some law. You know, the Ten Commandments, whatever. And there are people out there that are so fault, they're so heretical, heretical in their teachings, they'll tell you that, well, Christ says we're not justified by the, by the ceremonial laws, but we're still justified by some other law. I'm going to prove that all wrong in this sermon. We're not justified by any law. Okay? The Bible says, is the law then against the promises of God? God forbid. For if there had been a law given which could have given which could have given life, verily righteousness should have been by that law. So what he's saying there is if the law could have given you life, there would have been there would have been such a law, but there doesn't exist. There's no law that can give life. The Bible says the letter kills. The law kills. Okay, but now look what it says. But the scripture hath concluded all under sin that the promise by faith of Jesus Christ, okay, Jesus Christ, will, if you want to say faith is obedient, then it's, it's Jesus Christ's faith that's obedient. Because Jesus Christ was obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. But it's not our obedience. Because it's not even our faith that saves us. It's his faith. Okay, that the promise by faith of Jesus Christ might be given to them that believe. Now, it's our responsibility to believe on him. But once we do, it's his faith that secures our salvation. But before faith came, we were kept under the law, shut up under the, shut up unto the faith, which should, hear at, which should afterwards be revealed. So, you can't mix the two together. The law, the law was shuts. It, the law is what shut faith up. Let me read that again. But before faith came, we were kept under the law. See, now that you got faith, the law is gone. Is what he's trying to say there. You see that? Now look at verse twenty-four. Wherefore the law was our schoolmaster, so that we could be obedient and get saved that way. No, the law was our schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ, that we might be justified by. Faith. Now, to, pe to say that faith includes obedience would have to say that faith includes the law, but look at the next verse. But after that, faith is now come. We are no longer under the schoolmaster. No longer under the law or the schoolmaster. No, that's what it says. People don't like this because they want to try to contribute to their salvation, but they, they, you can't. It's, re it's ridiculous. You can't. For ye are all the children of God by faith. In Christ Jesus. That's as clear as day on how to, be, how to be saved. Faith in Jesus, child of God. Instantly, permanently. Now, turn to Hebrews. We're going to jump back. We're not done with this. We're going to jump back, I mean, forwards into Hebrews, and then we're going to come back and look at some of these verses that prove faith is not obedience to any law.
It's not. It's, it's, they totally cancel each other out. So turn to Hebrews. Now people want. They, I, I understand what people are. What people are saying. They want to serve God. They want. They want. They may. They may love God. They may be saved, and they want to be obedient. That's fine. I'm all for obedience. But you know what? It's not for salvation. It's, it's, her, it's heresy when you add obedience to salvation. <clears throat> okay, obedience is something we should we should want to exercise after we're saved. It's when you mix it with salvation, you've canceled salvation. You canceled it completely. And I'm going to prove that. Okay? Now, in Hebrews chapter 7, it tells us that the law cannot save anyone. Let me find that verse. Hebrews chapter, I believe it's in chapter 7. Okay, look at verse 19. For the law made nothing perfect. Salvation means you have to be perfect. It's not, it, it, we can't do it in our own. We're sinners. We sin every day. But see, Christ declares us perfect for, by what he did on the cross for us. And there's a lot of verses on that. He makes us perfect positionally. It has nothing to do with, with, our, with our experience because we're, we're still sinners. The Bible's clear. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. But the law made nothing perfect. But the bringing in of a better hope did, by the which we draw nigh unto God. Now, Jesus Christ was that better hope. Okay? The law does not make people perfect. Now look at verse 28. For the law maketh men high priests which have infirmity. It tells you they're not perfect. But the word of the oath, which was since the law, maketh the Son who is consecrated forevermore. So the law does not perfect anybody. That's why this whole, whole concept of faith includes obedience, or true faith is obedient. Give me a break. Because obedience to the law cannot perfect anyone. It's clear right there. Now jump back to Galatians. Okay, in Romans 4, 5, it says, it, 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 it delineates that you cannot even have faith if you're trying to be obedient. You can't even do it. God's not going to even accept it. Because it says, but to him that worketh not, that excludes any obedience. Worketh not, not doing anything. But to him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. Now, you can still believe on Christ and, and not work. And you can't work. And anyone who says that, Faith is works, is, is an idiot. Faith cannot be a work because it's excluding works. And the, the Apostle Paul knew this, and he was teaching this. Oh, foolish Galatians. Turn back to Galatians chapter 3. He's, he's telling you that there's no law, no obedience in, included in faith. Because God, we, we cannot earn our, our salvation. Now why, do people t why do people teach that faith includes obedience? Probably because they're lost. So that's the way, I mean, I'm sorry. That's the way it is. If, if, okay? If they were saved, they would be like, okay, I'm saved by grace. By faith alone. Grace alone. Faith, grace through faith. It's not of myself. It's I, God did it. Eternally secure. Once saved, always saved. They would know all that. But the they, they don't know it. They don't believe it. They don't believe Romans 4, 5. They, they, they've added their own little, they've added their own self-righteous, works and obedience to faith, and you've canceled it. The Apostle Paul is condemning this mess. O foolish Galatians, who hath bewitched you, that ye should not obey the truth, before whose eyes Jesus Christ hath been evidently set forth, crucified among you? Now these people were saved, that's why he's reaming them. He's getting on their case, he's blasting on them. Why have you, why have you perverted the Gospels, what he's saying? This only would I learn of you. Received ye the Spirit by the works of the law, by obedience, Think about it. Works of the law. Obedience. Obedience. Works. Good works. Obedience. Have you, but, but he's saying, did you receive the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? He's asking a question. Now he's calling them fools. People that teach lordship salvation, are the Apostle Paul would have called them a fool too. You know, are you so foolish? Are you so foolish? You know, John MacArthur. You know, John Piper. Paul Washer. Are you so foolish, you foolish lordship salvation hypocrites? The Apostle Paul would have gone off on those, those three. And on anyone else who teaches lordship salvation. Are ye so foolish, having begun in the spirit, are ye now made perfect by the flesh, or by obedience, or by the law? Take your pick. See, he, he, the answer is no. Have ye suffered so many things in vain, if it be yet in vain? He therefore that ministereth to you the spirit, and worketh miracles among you, Doeth he it by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? Now the answer is right here. Even as Abraham believed God, and it was 
counted unto him for righteousness. It wasn't by works or obedience, it was by believing. <clears throat> know ye therefore that they which are of the faith, the same are the children of Abraham. Now, how do you know obedience is not part of it? I mean, he's blasting, he's, let, he's already letting you know he's, he, it's in vain if, you try to, if you're trying to add your obedience or your repentance or whatever. Okay? Now let's just keep going because if this, 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 this whole doctrine, that I'm, this whole idea is just going to be reiterated again and again. And the scripture for, foreseeing that God would justify the heathen through faith, not works, not obedience, preached before the gospel unto Abraham, saying, In thee shall all nations be blessed. Okay? So then they which be of faith are blessed with faithful Abraham. Just faith. <clears throat> That's what it says. For as many as are of the works of the law, think about it. If you want to add obedience, look what the Bible says. You're cursed. If you want to add the law, you're, you're under the curse. You're under the curse. Because there's, either, there's, there's two ways of salvation. You or Christ. Now, Christ was the one who died on the cross for your sins. That's why God's not going to accept your obedience. Say, so does this mean we should live, go out and just live more sinful? No. Does this mean we should do nothing? No. Does this mean we should be just go back to the world? No, it does not mean any of that. It, it just means you can't do anything for your salvation. Now, because you're saved by grace, go out and serve me. Go out and, 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 and praise me and, 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 and live right. <clears throat> but I'm not teaching. That's what I'm teaching. The people that are teaching obedience is part of faith, they're trying to make you, they're trying to say you have to do, be obedient and do works and, and these things to be saved. And those are the heretics out there. Those are the false teachers. Okay? There's a big difference between saying you're saved by grace through faith, and now because you're saved, you should go do good works because of you, uh, grace. There's a big difference in, in saying that than saying you have to be you have to be good, you have to be obedient, you have to obey the law to be saved, or as part of faith. That, that's heresy, straight out of the pits of hell. The, the Apostle Paul was saying, if you want to be that way, you're cursed. Okay? You're cursed. Look at verse 11. But that no man is justified by the law or obedience. See that? In the sight of God. God that's what it says. You want to add obedience to faith? The Bible says you're not justified in the sight of God. Period. And people say, "Why do you, why do you get, why do you preach this all the time?" Hey, because it's a serious thing. Okay, people that add obedience to faith and they, they make it part of it are just adding law to it, and the Bible says they're not justified, they're not saved. That's what it says. And now look at verse twelve. And the law is not of faith. I thought faith included obedience. No, it doesn't. I'm sorry. Right there. They're not the same. They're two different things. Now, for those idiots that say, well, we're, we're not under the mosaical or the ceremonial laws, but we're still under some type of law. No. Titus 3.5 knocks that out. Okay, Titus 3.5 would include any type of good works, being good, turning from sin, anything. All of it. Because it says, not by works of righteousness. Not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to his mercy he saved us by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost. <clears throat> now that's what the Bible teaches. The, you, any, any type of good works would be included there. Okay, I'm tired of people you know, twisting the scriptures out of context to try to put people back under the law. It's, it's ridiculous. It's, it's heresy. And the, God's not going to accept it. <clears throat> and the law is not of faith. But the man that doeth, see that, obey, do, doeth them, shall live in them. Okay, if you want what he's saying here is if you want to be under the law, you're going to have to live it up. You're going to have to be you're going to have to do it completely. That's what he's saying. You're going to have to obey. That's the thing. If you want to be obedient add, and you want to add obedience to faith, you're going to have to be completely obedient to every law, period. That's the point. That's the whole point he's trying to make. But it's, see, we're not saved by the law. We're saved by grace. Because Christ hath redeemed us from the curse of the law. This demand that the law has, see that's that's the thing. All these, these idiots out there, faith is, includes obedience. They don't realize they're cursed. It includes obedience. It includes law that's going to curse you. See, Christ hath redeemed us from the curse. Hath redeemed us. means it's already, it's already over with. From the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree. That is clear right there. But now look at verse 17. 
Adding obedience to faith cancels everything. It, that, it says it cancels it. You ready for this? It cancels eternal life. There are people out there that teach lordship salvation that are on their way to hell right now because they've canceled. They won't admit that it's just faith alone and it's just believe and that they've, they've added all this other stuff. The Bible says they have canceled the promise. Right here, look at this. And this, this is why I get so mad and this is why I take this stuff so seriously. Because this is God's word. This is black and white what he's saying here. And this I say that the covenant that was confirmed before, before of God in Christ, the law, which was 430 years after, cannot disannul that it should make, now look at this, that it should make the promise of none effect. Now look at this, verse 18 makes, makes this even more, look at that, 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 hold on to that thought right there. For if the inheritance be of the law, see what he's saying is that, first he's saying if, if, it's, if you're saved by the law, the promise is of none effect. None effect. No heaven, no salvation, if you're going to be saved that way, through works or obedience, or any type of law. Now, what people are thinking is, well, if this is all true, then what, what would stop us from going out living like the devil? What would stop you is the love of God. You know, if you love me, keep my commandments. We, we want to serve God. We want to get rewards in heaven. We don't want to abuse grace. We want to, make, make, we want to hear God say, well done, good and faithful servant. That's what should keep us from living like the devil, not... See, people don't get it. They think, well, if it's either... There's no law, then just... I don't know what they think. I don't care what they say. I don't care what they think. What the Bible says is that the inheritance, in other words, eternal life, be of the law, instead of faith, it is no more of promise. That's as clear as day. Lordship salvation will not save you. Because it's all about law. Repentance, obedience. And these people, they get up there and they preach all this garbage... They say you can't you you got to repent and you can't just go on and you got to obey Christ you can't just go on sinning they actually think they're serving God they're serving Satan and the Bible says they don't even have eternal life for if the inheritance be of the law it is no more a promise but God gave it to Abraham by promise he gives it to anyone who believes on Christ through faith alone by promise it's a promise you guaranteed it and these people that get up there and they think they're serving God and they condemn what I teach, and they call it antinomianism and easy believism. They're the ones, according to the Bible, who have canceled salvation. They don't have salvation. You can get up there on your soapbox all day long and preach, repent of your sins, and go to hell because you added law. The Bible's clear on that. It, let me read that again. This this needs to sink into some people. If for if the inheritance be of the law, it is no more of promise. It's got to be pure grace, or you're not getting it. You see that? That's why I get so mad. People, why do you preach so hard against lordship salvation? Because it's damning people to hell. Because God says that you, you canceled the promise. Hey, eternal life is a promise. What's canceling it? This is people that are not saved. If you're saved, nothing cancels it. Because you're always saved. Eternal security. But if you're not saved, and you're buying, you know, Paul Washer's garbage lie that there's more to it than you got to repent of your sins, and you, you, he says all sorts of garbage. If you're buying his lie, and you've never believed on Christ and put your faith in Christ and what He's done for you, you you don't have salvation. It's foolish what they teach. All they're doing is adding works, and then they, they're denying it. They add works to the God. That's all they're doing. Whether it be repenting of sins or turning from sin, it's all it's all works. It's all it is. And these people have canceled the promise. Now let's just keep reading. Wherefore then serveth the law? It was added because of transgressions. Till the seed should come to whom the promise was made, and it was ordained by angels in the hand of a mediator. See, what he's saying is that if you're going to get saved God's way or you're not going to get saved at all. The reason why God's not going to accept this, the reason why obedience is not part of faith, <clears throat> is because we're not obedient. We're not, we're not, nobody's good enough. And God wants to save sinners, and he wants it to be a free gift. And I'm going to tell you now, adding obedience to faith makes, and I'm so sick of it. It's not accepting it as a free gift. It's saying, well, I want to try to help you. I want to try to 
pay for that gift, God. Here, here's my repentance. Here's my good deeds. I turned away from my drinking. I turned away from my cigarettes. I got rid of my fornication. Here, look at how good I am, God. Please save me because I'm so good. Wrong. For by grace are ye saved through faith. And that not of yourselves, that, that right there refutes the idea that obedience is part of faith. It's that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. Not of works, lest any man should boast. And the Bible, I'm just glad that's in there. I'm glad it's, it's all free. I'm glad Jesus paid it all. I'm not going to, I mean, people that are adding obedience, or hey, they've, they've established their own righteousness. And I'm going to tell you right now, it's, 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 it's damnable. For those that have never been saved. I know people there right now that are not saved. But they think they are. Because they, no, they don't, they don't think they're saved. They think they're going to heaven because of how they live. And I'm not playing around. This one lady I know, she thinks you can't live any way you want to and go to heaven. She thinks she's going to be there because of how she lives. And I showed her the gospel one day and she denied it. She didn't, she said, I don't believe that. It was a free grace gospel is what it was. It was a clear, and it, had, it, was, it was God's word too. I'm not even sure what verse it was. I think it was John 5, 24. She said, I don't believe that. There are people everywhere trying to establish their own righteousness, and the Bible says it's not going to save you. Now turn to Philippians chapter 3. Okay, look. I'm going to close with these verses. Concerning zeal, persecuting the church, touching the righteousness, which is in the law blameless. Now that's what the Apostle Paul, he was, you know, that, he was if anyone could have obeyed the law, it was him. But he's going to admit it doesn't. it's not going to save you. But what things were gained to me, those I counted lost for Christ. Yea, doubtless. And I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ, Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them but dung, that I may win Christ, and be found in him, not having mine own righteousness. You see that? Which is of the law. That would be obedience. But that which is through the faith of Christ the righteousness which is of God by faith. Faith alone. Now people have a lot of nerve to sit there and say, true faith is obedient. The Bible says, wrong. The Bible also says, no salvation to those people. And, they have, and it's sad, because these people have good intentions. And a lot of them really are sincere. They really do perhaps love God and they want to serve Him, but you know what? They love the wrong God. They, 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 they're, not, they're not loving the real God. The real God says, Jesus Christ paid it all. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. The real God says it's all by grace. The real God said Jesus Christ was obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. The real God says that, that it's the obedience of one that's going to give you, you eternal life, and, the, and that one is Jesus Christ. The real God says, but Abraham believed God, and it was counted unto him for righteousness, imputed righteousness. You got faith alone in Christ, God imputes his righteousness to you. It's to your account. And that guarantees you're going to heaven. Because your own righteousness wouldn't work, wouldn't cut it. And this is the best news in the world, and people still don't believe it. They still want to add their own works in there somehow. It's ridiculous. Now you see why I get so mad. Now turn back to Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 2. The whole thing about the law is Christ abolished it. Okay? Okay? He abolished it. All this talk about being obedient? Obedient to what? There's no law to be obedient to. You say, well, where does it say he abolished it? Right here. For he is our peace, who hath made both one, and hath broken down the middle wall of partition between us, having abolished in his flesh the enmity. Now look at this. You say, well, where do you get in this? Even the law of commandments. He abolished it all. Because he was perfect for us. That's what it says. Even the law of commandments contained in ordinances. It doesn't say he was perfect, but that's, that's what it implies. Contained in ordinances to make in himself of twain one new man, so making peace. And that he might reconcile both unto God in one body by the cross, having slain the enmity thereby. You see that? Christ did not come to destroy the law, he came to fulfill it. But there it says he, he abolished it. <laughs> I mean, this is good news. This is just, this is God's grace. Okay? <clears throat> Let me give you a couple more verses on this. 
because there's a lot to be said about this. Romans chapter 10. People out there shouting out, faith includes obedience. <laughs> when will it end? Faith is, does not include obedience. In fact, the Bible's clear. <laughs> it excludes obedience. That's what it says. The law is not of faith. It's not, they, they, don't, they don't mix. Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. For I bear them record that they have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. For they being ignorant of God's righteousness, ignorant of it, and going about to establish their own righteousness. That would be the people that say faith includes obedience. They're described right there. But look what it says. They have not submitted unto themselves the righteousness of God. They haven't done it. They're not, they're not good enough. For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness. Christ is the end of it. You say, well, you got to be obedient to what? To something Christ ended? Now look what it says. Unto the, for Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to every one that believe it. What is this saying? The people that are under the law are unsaved. They're not believers. The law is there to condemn people. Now, the people that are saved, the believers, the law has been done away with. The law has been fulfilled. The law has been obeyed by Christ. That's what the Bible teaches. Christ obeyed the law for us. We're helpless sinners. We can't get to heaven on our own. But thank God he sent his son, Jesus Christ, to die for our sins, to be buried and to, raise it, to, to be raised again. And Christ was obedient completely, 100% for us. And we get his imputed righteousness. We get God's imputed perfection just by a simple act of faith in Jesus. And that's, that's as good as it gets. And that's good news. And I, I'm telling you that people don't like this. They don't believe it. They think it's too easy or whatever they think. I don't care what they think. It's the truth. You add works to, to the gospel, you don't have a gospel. You add obedience to the gospel, you don't have a gospel. You add repentance to the gospel, you don't have a gospel. You add perseverance in the faith to the gospel, you don't have a gospel. The gospel is not what to do to be saved. The gospel is what's already been done for you. Jesus Christ died on the cross. He was buried and rose again on the third day. Believe on him to be saved. And it doesn't get any better than that. Christ, you, you think about it. If you add works to any of this, what you're saying, to, you're telling God, you're kind of implying it. You're saying, God, I don't think Jesus Christ was enough. I don't think he suffered enough for me. I don't think he hung on that cross and bled for me. I don't think... You know, he poured out, you know, your wrath was poured out on him. I don't think he satisfied your wrath. I don't think the blood is enough. And you're saying, dear God, I want to add more to it. I want to add my obedience. I want to make sure that's in there. Because I want to make it part of, that's what you're doing. That's what all these lordship people are doing. They're telling God Christ was not enough. And I'm telling you, scores of people are on their way to hell because of this, this garbage teaching. Scores. I can't even get online nowadays and, pick, and grab a good, solid website where, where it's gospel-related. I can't do it. There's hardly, hardly anything out there. Everywhere I go, it's, it everyone's just taking, you know, adding, adding works back in there somehow. Now, some, just, some may be doing it out of ignorance. They don't know any better, and they maybe are saved, but they just, they've just fallen you know, for some false teacher or something. Others, I believe, are still, <clears throat> are still trusting in their works. And they won't let go of their pride. They, they won't let go of the fact that it's that simple. It's easy. Believe. Believe. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. They, it's that simple. Why won't they just come to the sim simplicity of, of the gospel? Why can't they just, they just know Christ was enough? It's a free gift. I don't understand people. What then shall we sin because we are not under the law? God forbid. We are under grace. God forbid. All he's saying is God forbid we sin if, because we're not under the law. It's not saying that people actually don't sin. <clears throat> Basically, the whole point there is not to abuse grace. It's to love God, to love others, to serve God, and to do it because we're saved. Already, not to do it to be saved. So many people are doing all this stuff to be saved. And the reason why they do it, and the reason why they teach it, is because they don't, they don't like eternal security. They want to condemn others. They want to judge others. They want to make others feel like they're not really saved. It's a sick teaching. It's twisted. That's all I have. The law will not save anyone. Okay, period. And I can go over a ton more verses to prove this. I think I've reached my saddest diction. 
The Bible says we are to be testifying to the, of the gospel of the grace of God. And now, brethren, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among all them which are sanctified. And you're sanctified by Christ and not by yourself. Dear God, thanks for allowing me to preach this sermon. It's a sad and tragic reality, but we live in a, we live in a time where people are not accepting the free grace message of the Bible. And they've added stuff to it, and they've taken stuff from it, and they've perverted the gospel, and it's sad. And I, I've, I've given as many verses as I can, you know, need, I feel like I, I need to give on this subject. We do not add anything to faith, because faith is not is non-meritorious. Faith is just a, as a response to a proposition. The proposition is that you died for our sins, you were, you were buried and rose again. We believe on you, we're saved. Faith is just accepting the free gift. Keep us safe, bless us abundantly, in Jesus' name I pray, amen. <clears throat>